Welcome to Eternal Truth Now. I'm Elaine Haynes. I'm Kerry Haynes. And we're really glad you joined us today. Um, we hope that you were able to listen to the previous broadcast about God's purpose prevails. It leads into this one, which is the Spirit and the Word are working in you. That's what we're going to be talking about today. We love the Word of God. We've seen the power of God's Word to save, heal, deliver, restore, redeem. And He's continually doing a work within us all the time through His Word and by His Spirit. So we're going to open in prayer and dig deep quickly into God's Word. So um, you want to open in prayer? Can God, I, I, and speaking you, of the Spirit, Lord, we just ask as you're uh, promising your Word and as if we ask for the Holy Spirit that you give it to us, Lord, we ask for the Holy Spirit to open our ears and our eyes to a spirit of wisdom and revelation. We ask, Lord, that your word says in 1 Corinthians 12 that we're all made to drink of one spirit. Yes. So we desire, Lord, to drink of your spirit so that we'll be fully aligned with your purpose and grace that was given us in Christ Jesus yes, before the world began. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. So again, today we're going to be talking about the spirit and the word are working in you. They work hand in hand to develop Christ in you, to develop that new man, the, the new man that we are new creatures, but there's a developing of that new creature um, because we have a soul and we have a flesh. So I'm going to start with 2 Thessalonians 13 and 14. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, as we said in the last broadcast, that, there's that the glory of Christ that is in you, because it is in you, Jesus has already given it to you. He is full of glory and he is in you. So that is always at war against your, your flesh and your, and I'll say parts of your soul, because your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. So we have a mind of the flesh, which is re sense and reason without the Holy Spirit. And then we have the mind of the Spirit, the mind of Christ. We have that. So they're always at war. But God has chosen you to, and I'll say it this way, the fullness of salvation. Because there's another verse which says our, the saving of our soul to the uttermost. Because it's our soul that needs to be saved to the uttermost. We have a new spirit within us. But our soul is all those things that have been put inside of us in our mind and in, in our emotional responses to things and our will <clears throat> which we choose where we choose those things that need that have to be sanctified by the holy spirit through belief that and through the belief of the truth so the two things work together you know that that word is deep it goes deep it you know the word of god is quick it's powerful it's sharper than a two-edged sword it divides asunder just like the joints in the marrow that's the spirit and the soul Right. And, it, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's what the Word of God does. And by the Spirit, the Spirit works with the Word to bring forth the new man and to bring forth the, to the obtaining of the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then there's another verse where it bears witness of this word. Jesus in John 17, this is where he's praying to the Father, and he says in this that I've given them of my glory, that they may be one even as we are one. <clears throat> And he also says in John 17 and 17, sanctify them through thy truth. <clears throat> thy word is truth. And the reality is Jesus is the word. Mm. He is the word made flesh and dwelling among us. And he, as we are conformed to his image, as we receive his word, we're receiving his life, a measure of him in us that will now come forth through our flesh this yielded vessel, by the sanctification of the Spirit. And I just want to talk about that for a second, is that sanctification is the work the Holy Spirit does. It's not a bunch of rules that we set in front of us and go, well, I'm going to stop doing this, and I'm going to stop doing this, and I'm going to start doing that, and I'm going to stop. That's not the sanctification of the Spirit. Sanctification of the Spirit is an unknowing of how we don't understand the way that the, He does it, but He brings things out of us so that we can slay them let's just put it that way he's the one that works in our circumstances with that word getting inside of us and it starts to to break apart those places in us that 
aren't in line with that truth and starts to bring them up to the surface through that hot process like the gold is tried in the fire. It brings it up and then, then God, with our obedience, our willingness, and he has his way to make us willing, then he skims it off. That's part of that sanctification of the spirit. And it's an ongoing process because we have a soul. We're in the world. The things in the world get on us, but we're not of the world. So that not of the world part, Christ in us, is always through the Spirit and through His Word working out our, the fullness of our salvation. You know, uh, it, it can't be uh, repeated enough, to, and you brought it out, that uh, what this verse is saying, through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth, uh, you know, and the Word of God, you know, we're, we're talking about the Spirit and the Word working together, and, and you know, you're so right about, you know, a, in Hebrews 4.12, that the Word of God is quick. That means it's, it's active. active. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, operative. Yes. It's operative. Mm -hmm. And powerful and sharper than any two which It's are piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. And that's what has to happen. Yes. And, and it Amen. does through the Word of God. And, you, you know, you were uh, saying that Christ is the Word. And that's exactly true and that w we said this in the last broadcast man i gonna say it again uh god put us in first corinthians 1 30 mm -hmm. god put us in christ it says but of him god mm -hmm. are ye in christ jesus okay who of god is made unto us yes. wisdom yes. and righteousness and sanctification yes. and redemption jesus has made those things unto he us he is Beautiful. that and we were Beautiful. God Beautiful. put us in Him, and He is that yes. in Amen. us. Amen. Amen. Come that's on, why He gets, that's why the next verse says that according as it is written, He that glories, let him glory in the Lord. Amen. Amen. That from Come the on. beginning, we talk about predestination, but, but of Him. Of Him. Are we in Christ Jesus, who has made unto us these things that we can't do. Right. In our own strength. Right. It's grace and it's his spirit in us. And that's what part of what I've been reading about circumcision, a sign of covenant is circumcision. Well, part of what circumcision is, that cutting away of the flesh, is that yes. cutting away of that the strength of the flesh. Come on. Come on. Right. Yeah. You know? And uh, so, and as it goes on, yes, this Lord. other part of the verse says, through sanctification of the spirit and belief. Here's how it's done again, and belief, belief of, of the, the truth. truth. Belief of the truth. Well, Amen. how do you believe faith comes by hearing? Without yes. faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen. And we receive the Spirit, Galatians 3 says, tells us, we receive the Spirit through the hearing of faith. Amen. And Which faith comes by hearing, right. and hearing by the Word of God. The Word of God. Amen. So this whole operation. Yes. <laughs> Well, and I, 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 you know, I can't get away from what, what you were just, what we just said about that. Christ is the Word, right? And and it, right. it's so it plain is. right here that right. we are, God put us in Christ, and that that He is made unto us yes. wisdom Amen. and righteousness and sanctification Amen. and redemption. Amen. This is more than it's not a doctrine, right? It is. It is a doctrine. Paul right. says, you have obeyed from the heart those things that, but that form of doctrine that I delivered unto you. But it's, it's, it's reality. See, that's what yes. belief of the truth. You shall yes. know the truth, and the truth will set you free. It's knowing that in Christ, you're in Christ. God put us in Christ to be able to be this, not do it even, to be right. able to be Amen. it. We live Amen. and move and have our being in right. Him. You know, yes. and as you, again, as you believe that, as God brings you to that place where you, you lose your own ability to do only what he can do, when he brings you to that place, you're, you're start, you start hearing something like this yes. that, that will turn your life around and turn you, not according to your works, you right. know, to how much, you know, so that's the belief of the truth. You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. You know, the Holy Spirit uh, will bring to it. He'll, he'll guide, he'll lead you and guide you to all truth. That's why we're saying the Spirit and the Word are working, working in you. Right. 
And as, as your faith develops, you begin to be able to better differentiate what is a, what is a wisdom that is not from above, but as the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ in you, tell, He, yes. His Spirit actually in you telling you this or yes. being that in you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm going to go on to, to say uh, Romans, uh, we've been in Romans 8 a lot. It's an you know, incredible chapter. Mm -hmm. and, and Paul says in Romans 8, 18, he says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So I don't know everything. I can't pretend to know everything about the sufferings of Christ. Uh, but one thing I, I do perceive that it is, that suffering in the flesh Absolutely. to right. cease from sin, that suffering in the right. flesh right. to let the Word of God divide that piercing, that to divide asunder. Think of that word, that dividing asunder. That it's a place of suffering in the flesh. So you're letting your flesh be crucified. Right, right. And but I just want to interject here because it's it's not a again, it's not a making a decision. Yeah. For that. Because right. here's the thing. It's and I'm jumping a little bit, Carrie, but in Philippians two and thirteen, there's a lot of verses here to encourage you with this. That it's God, it is God Himself which worketh in you to will and to do of his pleasure. It is God himself who does that. Mm. And again and again in Ephesians 1.11, in whom we've obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him, who worketh all things after the counsel of his own. But these worketh words, these worketh in you. He worketh all things together that works according to the power that works within us. Those words, the word is energio in, in the um, original language, in the Greek. Energy, it's that active operation, the same word as, as the Word of God, what it is. It's active and operative. It does the work. He does the work. He is doing the work in you. It is His presence in you. It is His Spirit in you that is causing you to even want to do His will, that it's causing you to want to do of His pleasure, that's causing you to, to want to go forward, that's causing you to want to lay aside those, th those sins and those weights which so easily beset us. It's him inside you doing it. It's not something you have to work up on your own. No, he'll do the work. He will do it. He will bring you to that place of being willing to lay it aside. Yeah, and part of what I've found, part of, of, of being willing or part of believing this or really realizing this is through failures. Yes, right. <laughs> is through failing so many times, even though you're like going forward, you're right. doing pretty good, right. you, you are growing and God, you know, there's a, a measuring that, that happens in our lives. Yes. Uh, we don't just come in to the fullness all at once, but I, you know, say it's a finished work, actually. It is a finished work, right. It's already a right. finished work. And, uh, but to get to the point where you're willing to believe or able to believe, to see that, that's that vision again, where right. you see that it's a finished work. You right. see that, that these things are true. Yes. And that, that, that you, again, you're, you're hearing it and there's an entrance. The Bible yes. says there's an entrance of his word yes. that it brings light. Yes. And it's the light. It's not, a, like you said, it's not a decision right. as much as it is a light that dispels, that darkness. dispels darkness. And then it's it gone. It burns it up. Right. He exposes right. it, brings it's it done. to the light. And it, you don't, not by your own effort, not by might just, nor by strength, right. but by my spirit, it's saith just the Lord. Right. You know, when you go into a dark room and you turn on the light, there's no dark, you can't see darkness anymore. Right? And it's like that. When he shines his light on something that other people have told you, you know, might have told you, your parents might have told you it's wrong or whatever. I'm just telling you from my experience. And even you can even like know it's wrong. You can hear it's wrong. You can see it's wrong. But when he shines his light on it, it's done. It is done. It is finished. You don't even have a desire for it anymore because now you've seen. He's shown you. So there's this, this right. working there, that, that he does. There is a finality, like you said. There is. There right. is a finality about it. Yes. I mean, you never think you stand lest you fall. Right. But when God does a deep work like this, right. there's a finality about it where you don't go backwards from there. Not from that, right. Not when it's the Spirit. Not yeah. when it's the Holy Spirit doing it. When he reveals it, when he... When he does that, that final separation. Well, and you're kept by the power of God through, through faith. faith. Through faith, right. So your, faith. The, your, your part 
is to continue to believe. Continue to to, believe. Like, you know, Jude says he was an apostle. He says he found it necessary to tell that church to contend for the faith once delivered to the saints. Well, Amen. this is what was once delivered to the saints. Paul's right. just enumerating, you know, he's just putting it into words. Exactly, right. This was put, this was the faith delivered to right. the saints. That this Christ, he, you're, you're, he's, God's put you in Christ, and Christ is it's the It's actually victory. his faith. It's yeah. his faith in you. That's what the Bible says right. in Galatians 2.20. Right. Right. Know, it's no longer I who live, but Christ right. who lives in me. And the life that I now live in the, live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Amen. And, you know, again, to get to that place, you can have a lot of failings of right. trying to work up faith versus right. content for the faith or versus just hearing, believing just Christ believing. is in you. It's believing. And, believing it's a finished work. Yeah. You know, believing that by the Spirit, by the Spirit you can mortify the deeds of the flesh. It's, but it's all by the Spirit. It's by believing. You know, Smith Wigglesworth, Sorry, I was kind of tripped over that a little bit. With Smith with wheels were. <laughs> you know, he didn't know how to read. When he first when started he, out, yeah. Yeah, when he first started, he only went to, I think, like fourth grade or something. And then he had to go to work. And but when he got married, I mean, his wife wanted to, to teach him how to read. And she taught him through the Bible. And that's the only book he ever read. And his thing was always only believe. And he raised people from the dead. He healed the sick, all of that. Only, said, believe. only believe, yeah. only believe, only believe, only believe God. Believe that it's Christ in you. Believe what the book says. Believe that you can do these things. Believe I can do all things through Christ, through Christ, not in my own working, not through laying hold of a, like trying to claim something, but, right, right. but through him, right. through him and me. It's him and me doing the work. It's Christ in you that's the hope of glory. It's Christ in you. That, that does the work because the reality is you're dead. When you're born again, you're dead to the old. You're dead and you've been buried with him and now you're risen with him in a new man. You're a new creature. You're a new man. All things old are passed away and behold, all things are made new. You are a new creature. You don't be bound any longer by all the things that were said about you or all the sins that you did. Don't be bound by any of that because you're a new creature. Everything is under the blood. Everything is buried with him in baptism. And now you are risen. You are seated with him in heavenly places. Well, now, now come up to that place of reality. That's the truth. Live from that place that you are a new creature. Don't let the old, the old mindset, the old personality, the old tapes... The old um, lies of the devil and all the other lies that the world has tried to put well, on you. Well, and you know you what? Are. What makes that actuate or makes that happen to realize that you're a new creature? Notice the way it's Paul the said it. He said, right. uh, "Behold, all things are become new. If any man right. be in Christ, in Christ, he's a new right. creature. Right. Uh, old things pass away. Behold, that's like a seeing word. It is a seeing word. Behold, all things, all things. Yes." become new yes yes amen amen and god is all the while i'm going to get back to that god is all the while at work within you and it happens through the word of god and his spirit if that word is that seed that goes into the ground and it brings yeah. forth fruit it brings forth new life you break the seed then the seed we don't understand that i love the parables of the of the sower and the seed and all the other parables that jesus gives about gardening because i love to garden and there's mysteries in it. Yeah, because you know you plant a seed, and you don't know. I mean, science tells us what happens a little bit. You know that the um, outer husk breaks off. Well, that's what happens to us—the breaking of the outer man for yeah. the release of the spirit. So right. the, the, the 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 seed breaks off. But you know, you have to water that thing. You have to let it get sunlight. So I think about that. The word talks about the water. That we're, the water of the washing of the word. We're, we're purified by the water of the word. He's living water, right? And and um, the warmth of the sun, and he gives the us water to drink. He, yes. he gives us, like we were saying when we were praying at the start, we're all made, it says in 1 right. Corinthians 12, to, to, to uh, drink of one, of one spirit. Yes. We're made to drink of yes. one spirit. Right. That living water yes. is, is what we need. And, you know, in, in, uh, in uh, Isaiah 27, he, he, he talks about when Leviathan, the, the devil, is put down, and then that we bring forth a new vineyard, a new wine, yes. a new garden. Amen. Amen. Now, th and then, th then Amen. the Bible says that God says that he'll water it every moment. So beautiful. 
picture. Lest up. someone should come in and destroy it. I don't so know if you need the right word, destroy. But it does say, I will water it's it beautiful. every moment. You know, and it, when you, you know how you get to the place of believing that is again through failure to, because you see what's, what life is like, you know, trying to do it yourself, trying to try harder. But then when you start to say, wait a minute, what does God say? You know, I will water it every moment. Right. So he is watering it every moment. Yes. So you, you're, you embrace that. You hear that uh, to experience it. Right. It's really living, eating from the tree of eternal life versus the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Think about the that. The thing yeah. of good and evil is that we think something's good or we think something bad, so we make our choices versus when we partake of Christ, when we partake of his life. It's just a continual elevation. It's a continual moving forward where the other keeps us stuck. And, you know, we have to choose. We have to make a decision. You know, all of this. This is good. This is bad. Well, um, well, I don't well, want to do this. I better do that. All that. Well, we are told, you know, in uh, Hebrews 5, 14, I think it is, that our senses are to be trained to discern yes. between good and evil. Right, but that's... But we don't eat of that tree. We eat of the tree of life to have life. Is that... Right, but the, I, I, look at, with that verse, I look at that verse as we're, we're training our senses, our spiritual senses. Right. But also our natural to where when we discern what's of the spirit and what's not, that's how kind of how mm. I... Right. View that, you know, is that I would view it as in relation to what we're talking about is, is this, go, is this what I'm sensing here? Is right. this from the word of life of Jesus or is this from that, that voice of the devil that, that is condemning, that is, um, you know, keeping us rule bound, rule bound, the religious spirit, which is that to me, that's the good and evil. And, and, not to get into all that, yeah. because you know the the law was given to us for the knowledge of sin, that we then we can realize that we're a sinner in need, in need of a savior, and, and we we know that and we thank God for that. That but He's brought us out of that into the kingdom of His Son, and and there is a laboring, you know, Colossians one and twenty nine says, wherefore unto I also labor according striving according to His working, which worketh in me mightily. So the our part is to lay down the flesh, and to allow the Holy Spirit to to deal with us in those places that He brings up in us and to to say yes. Our 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 striving is to continue to say yes when our when our flesh doesn't want to. I mean that's kind of the bottom line. You know, but I'm gonna just for a moment, you know, we're talking about being able to train our senses to discern between good and evil. Yeah. You know, the the voice of of, of guilt, condemnation or, mm -hmm. you know, do this, don't do that versus light and life. Right. You know, that it does say in James that it's important in 317, he says, but the wisdom that is from above, first of all, he started off saying what, what the demonic, earthly, devilish wisdom, what that produces. He actually mm -hmm. says that mm -hmm. in this chapter. But he says, but the wisdom from his, that is from above is first pure, then peace. Think about that. It's first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated. Think about that. The wisdom from above is willing to yield. You, it, that's again, that thing of his goodness leads to repentance, leads you to change your mind. That the wisdom from above is, the love of God is wrapped around every word that Amen. proceeds out of his mouth. Amen. That enables you yes. to do this. Amen. And that's again, that's his, it's, it's his the word spirit. again. It's, Christ is the word. And his spirit. Full of right. truth and grace. Yes, amen. Full of truth and grace. Amen. amen. And amen. you know, when you're talking about, I also labor, strive according to his working. You know, Paul said that he, uh, in 1 Corinthians 15, 10, I believe it is, he says that, you know, he labored all the more abundantly. Yet, this is what he said. I, first of all, he says, I am what I am by the grace of God. I labored all the more abundantly, yet not I, but the grace of God in me. Amen. Amen. And Jesus is full of grace and truth. Of grace Amen. and truth. Amen. That's why you can go forward. Amen. In the Spirit. Amen. Yes. Amen. You know, there's... um. Just to touch on this a little bit before we have to close. Um, when we're looking at what, you know, we were, the last session we talked about God's purpose prevails. And, and this part, the spirit and the word are working in you, just to bring about the effectual working again, which is that energy 
that working. And the effectual is that his working in you actually causes it to happen. That's, that's what, what we're it trying means. to get. That's it effectual yeah. means it effects a work. It creates the work. It, it finishes the work. It brings it forth. That effectual, that's what that word means. And there's a few scriptures about that that I to encourage you with is in 1 Corinthians, when Paul is talking about the gifts, it's the gifts chapter, chapter 12, there are diversities of operations or different ways in which God moves through each of us, you know, in, in our gifts, right? But it's the same God which worketh all in all. So it's that same His Spirit in us that is doing the work. It may manifest differently in Carrie than it manifests in me and it manifests in you. But it's the same God. It's the same Spirit of God using the Word of God. And... In Galatians 2 and 8, for he, God, that wrought or did the work effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision or to the, the Gentiles, I mean, excuse me, to the Jews, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. So it's that same working of God to, per, to bring forth his purpose. That's what I want to say. His purpose, his working in you all the time he's always at work within you to will and to do of his pleasure or his purpose i'll put it that way the, because that is his pleasure his purpose is his pleasure being realized in the earth you know so god is all the while at work within you and our job is really just to say yes to allow him because we have a will you know and i'll just say from my life he has a way of of getting us to that place of being willing. Yeah. You know, and it's, but he's so good. I just can't emphasize that enough. He is so good. What the plans he has for you are beyond what you were even able to imagine in your wildest dreams, the plans that he has for your life. They are beyond good. They're beyond what you and your, uh, again, say it again, in, in the, the, even beyond what you could even begin to ask, to ask or think or even think or even or think. even think it's way beyond that that's how good he is and you know it's like you he brings you into a place where you're satisfied with things that you didn't even know you wanted so God we thank you we thank you we thank you that it's your power in us it's your spirit in us that you are so good that you will bring forth your purposes in every person, Lord God. Stir up them, their hearing, to be able to hear and to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <laughs>